Hi everyone, this is Srini here and welcome back to my channel, Java Automation and Selenium Learning with Srini. So in this particular video, we are going to continue with our Automation Architect interview questions. And this is going to be a topic which is very important uh, for an Automation Architect. So there will be a, definitely a question asked to this particular role of uh, interviewee, right? That what is the design pattern, code practices have you used in your day-to-day -day life or in your career so far? So this is a guaranteed interview question and believe me, 95% of the candidates, either they are not able to explain confidently or they get stuck here or they are not sure as to what to tell here, right? They talk about the automation framework being used, how it is basically designed and et cetera. But the question here is completely different. It is a used in your automation framework, but the interviewee is not able to explain to the interviewer as to what exactly is the expectation, right? They are not able to give the right answer. So I'm going to talk about this in depth today. So please pay attention for the same. So whenever the interviewer asks you, what are the design patterns have you used in your day-to-day -day life or in the automation, right? You need to talk about any one design pattern which you have used thoroughly, okay? You should be able to explain it confidently and with an example. So there may be a cross-questioning happening with respect to like, can you please write it down in a word document or show it in a paint diagram so you should be able to confidently explain whatever you are trying to you know explain about the design pattern it could be any of these patterns okay so these are some of the important design patterns which are used in automation in day-to-day -day life i have mentioned a few here but you can still find out there are more other patterns like structural pattern is also there right structural design pattern is also there etc so there are like so many design patterns available and these are not like uh, specific to Selenium or automation. These are Java design patterns. I'm talking about design patterns with respect to a programming language. Okay. So these are Java language design patterns, which are applicable for automation testing. So first one, we are already aware and most of the programmers do use the automation programmers page object model, right? And page factory. There are two uh, page object model and page factory are the two popular design models where it actually acts like an object repository. Like it helps us to design our framework in such a way that we store or we create variables for locator and we create methods. Right? We create methods for the same uh, for interacting with the object locator. So I'm just going to give a very short idea about these different ones. Okay. Then there is factory design pattern. So we can have a factory where we can try to break down our entire structure of the framework in such a way that we can try to have subclasses and sub uh, responsibilities divided, et cetera. And we can have every individual one do their respective role, okay? So I'm not going to go too much in depth of every design pattern because it will take a lot of time. And I will be creating separate video on these design patterns in my different playlist, okay? So stay tuned for the same. I'm just listing down whatever ones you need to be aware of and any one of them you need to Ensure you're thorough with your knowledge and hands-on. Right? Third one is facade design pattern. Fourth one is singleton design pattern. Then we have fluent page object model. So it's like a little bit fine tuning of the page object model, which we have discussed in the first point. Then we have data driven testing, which you all might be aware that using test ng data provider, we can do data driven testing. This is also one of the popular things uh, available for us to be able to use in our framework. Then we have fluent interface pattern and then we have structural design pattern, right? And there are many more available, but these are uh, the few important ones which I thought of including and letting you all know. So you all can start preparing on one of them and also do a hands-on because the reason I'm saying is it's not just mugging up the answer or knowing the conceptual thing. It's also about practically being able to feel you are able to do it and show it if the interviewer asks you do it practically. They may tell you, share your screen, open Eclipse or open an online Java compiler and write the code. So what will you do, right? If you know conceptually, if you're not able to show it hands-on, you are going to get stuck, right? The interviewer is going to find out that there is something not right, right, about this uh, particular topic with this particular candidate. So you have to back up yourself with your conceptual knowledge with practical hands-on. Okay, and I'll create videos on these different design patterns with an example soon. Now let's talk about the second part of this question, coding practices, best code practices. Now, these are very few which I've mentioned. There are so many Java best coding practices we can find over the in the internet. 
but these are some of the important ones which definitely any programming language or any programmer would definitely have to take care of. There should not be any use of hard coding, right? You should not hard code any locator. I'm just giving from terms of automation now. Any URL, any username, password. These are different data which we use. Any test data also we should not hard code. Any parameters being uh, passed or received, basically, right? Basically passed or whatever. You should not hard code any value at all. Everything should come. These should come. Just giving the source now. Either it can come from an Excel sheet, it can come from an XML, it can come from a properties file, right? It can come from a database and so on like that. Right? There are so many different sources which are there where you can store these different data. No need to hard code any of these things in your automation code or any part of the framework. Second thing is we need to use comments and functional documentation comment also because this will give a very good insight to any other programmer who might have recently joined the team, right? He or she may not be able to understand what this code is doing if it is so complicated, right? But if you have some functional documentation comment or if in case before the line of code you have mentioned any explanation about that what that code is going to do, it's going to certainly help the programmer to understand better, right? Then third thing is not make use of inheritance when it is not required. I've seen the thing that if, let's say, for code reusability, right? I know code reusability is really a good thing in Java and any programming language, and I really do accept that fact, but it has to be done with a proper way, right? If, let's say, there are so many different concepts which you might be aware, like composition is there, aggregation is there, then there is inheritance concept. Then there are interfaces, right? We can make use of interfaces also. Why do we need to use inheritance? If we can use interfaces and we can have classes implemented. So let's say there are two classes which are not at all related to each other. Okay, I'm just talking about, let's say, for example, department of a particular a company. Okay, And let's say, for example, students, right? These are two different classes. They may be making use of something in common, but does it mean that department has to inherit students or students has to inherit departments like extended? No, it's not mandatory. And there could be some other kind of relation also. There could be composition, there could be aggregation between some entities. It doesn't always necessarily mean that you need to inherit. One class has to inherit the other class. So make a wise use of when to use inheritance, when to use composition, when to use aggregation, right? And when to use interfaces. These are really critical in terms of maintaining your automation framework or creating a scalable automation framework from scratch. So this is a very important point. So make a note of that. Fourth is make good use of interfaces. It's a, it's a powerful concept which we have interfaces. And since the Java 1.8 version, there have been so many useful features which are now on top of interfaces we can try to use. So we need to definitely make good use of interfaces rather than always going ahead with the knowledge or application of inheritance. Okay. So I can take an example and I can show you all in a separate lecture or video where I can show you all how we can make good use of interfaces. So if you want that, please do put a comment on the channel. I'll create a separate video. Fifth point is that we should avoid tight code coupling. So often I have seen that certain programmers, they maybe uh, with practice or the way it was written in initially, they try to continue the same way where one particular code is in, dependent basically on another code. So what happens in this scenario is that, okay, so there is no need to tightly couple it, but because of this way of your coding, what happens is that if one fails, other is definitely going to fail. Okay. So we need to avoid these kind of practices. We need to think of how independently we can uh, have certain components or the coding done in such a way that without that also tight coupling also we are able to do it. So basically do loose coupling is what I'm trying to call out here. Okay. Try not to do tight code coupling. Keep the code clean and simple rather than making it too complicated for yourself in future to understand as well as for new programmers. Keep it clean and simple and don't have clustering of code. Clustering of code in the sense like not leaving any line in between. And continuously, there are like so many 
lot of lines of code are there. It's very difficult for anyone to understand what's going on in a method example, right? I'm just talking about that. So it's very difficult for someone to understand what is going on in the code, right? I'm just saying avoid clustering of code. Okay. Then follow, keep it simple, stupid principle. I've already talked about it earlier. I'm reiterating it. These three things are one of the three important things, but there are so many other coding principles like solid principle is there, dry principle is there. That is don't repeat yourself. And I'll talk about the solid principles also. So there are some principles called solid principles. Okay. So solid is like substitution principle. S stands for substitution principle. So we can have a separate video on this. I'll definitely create open close principle. This is with respect to interfaces. Then L stands for Lisco substitution principle. And we are going to look at it in detail. Then we have interface. I stands for interface aggregation principle. Segregation principle. And D stands for dependency inversion principle. So these are the different things which I wanted to discuss in the current video. So stay tuned for my next video and we'll continue further. Thank you so much.